Lord bless each one of you. Just turn this up a little bit, Steve. Nice to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That song we sang last, Better is One Day in Your Courts. I thought about people who get saved right on their deathbed, you know. Like a thief on the cross. Thank God. Amen. We serve a good God. Open your Bibles to the book of First Samuel, the seventeenth chapter. Amen. Have you got it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First <laughs> Samuel 17. Amen. Okay. Okie dookie. We're going to start in verse 32. Now this is a real familiar portion of scripture for all of us I know. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail him. Your servant will go and fight with his Philistine. And Saul said to David, You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You're a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. Yeah. And when a lion or a bear came and took out one of the lambs of the flock, I went out after it mm -hmm. and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught it by his beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like just, just like one of them. Seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said, David, go. The Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor. And he put on a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk where he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I can't walk with these things for I have not yet <coughs> tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had 
And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word tonight. I pray, Father, that you would bring an unveiling of your truth tonight. That it would not be just a lesson for our intellect, but that it would transform our life. And that we would walk as you have called us to. And I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Psalms, King David wrote most of Psalms. Much of Psalms. And in Psalms 56, he said, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. And in Psalms 9, verses 9 and 10, David says, The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. I believe King, King James calls it a refuge. Those who know your name trust you, O Lord, because you have never deserted those who seek your help. I was thinking about uh, life and how fragile it really is. We we think that we uh, have got this thing pretty well wired. At least you would think you would by now. But it never seems to fail to show us that we still get surprised with things. People go through hard times in their life. Things that are not easy, things that don't make sense. There's a reason why this happens. It's because there is an enemy of your soul. And the immediate thing that the devil does is he begins to lie to you about the reality of God. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the goodness of God. And I see people who are going through hard times in their life and during those hard times they fail. <coughs> they backslide. They go and get uh, <coughs> they get somebody else's opinion unsaved what they ought to do. So they wind up going through these hard times in their life ill-prepared. And I was thinking about the tornadoes that hit Oklahoma. You know, I would have thought that if, especially in that area, wouldn't you think that everybody and their mother would have had a storm cellar? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that the schools would have had something set up for everybody to go to? Amen. Each one of us, we need a place of peace during the hard times in our life. Each one of us need a place to go to. We used to go Maybe to alcohol or to drugs or whatever else. But that never really prepared you. No. These people in Oklahoma, I can't even imagine the terror that must have been on them. Has, has anybody here ever gone through a tornado? <laughs> I, I can't even picture it. 
I mean, I hear the words, but I just can't get it all. I can't wrap my head around it. I remember when I was in Texas, uh, they set off the sirens, and I thought, good grief, we're going to be in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. The rain was coming down like crazy, and this thing was screaming. And nobody had ever told us where we were supposed to go. Uh -oh. yeah. Well, I'm standing in a phone booth. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was right out of California. I didn't know. So anyway, these people that were in Oklahoma, not every one of them had shelters. Yeah. Not every one of them had a shelter. And when we go through hard times in our life, not everybody has a shelter. Mm -hmm. King David spoke in Psalms 9 as well as the other in Psalms 50, whatever it was. That, six. six, thank you. That the Lord is his refuge. Mm -hmm. The Lord is his refuge. Well, where, when was that refuge established in David's life? That refuge was built long before he ever became king. Amen. That refuge was built when he was a kid. And he was out doing something for his dad, and he realized that he had to rely upon God and that when he got with God, that he could do things that he couldn't do on his own by himself. Amen. And that God made things come out right. Mm -hmm. And he realized that it was because he trusted in God. Amen. There are people who have never ever built themselves or established that reality of a shelter with God. I believe that one of the greatest enemies of the Christian is fear. Yeah. One of the greatest torments of a Christian is fear. Fear of what? Fear of the unknown. Things we don't know what's going to happen. The things we've never experienced before. And all of a sudden we begin to believe the absolute worst. Rather than the best. Hello? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they... Have you ever heard of being hung by your tongue? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people when they begin to say things right out as soon as the problem comes. Oh, dear God, not another one of these things. Well, we ne this is never going to end. We're never going to make it through this one. I watched a guy on TV, and his, his business was going through a hard time, and he tells one of his managers, just flip the sign around, tell everybody to go home. This is it. We're going to be out of business. And I thought, what a tool. You can't say that. But he didn't know God. So he had nowhere to turn. Tonight, I want you to understand that there's got to be a place for believers. And we know that where's, where's our refuge? Our refuge is with the Lord. He is our strong tower. He is our fortress. King David talked about the stronghold as a place where a king could go and hide when the enemy comes in. It would normally be up a, an area above and all of his soldiers would be down below fighting to keep him safe. This was a stronghold that was built for the king. That was the last place of defense. And so David realized that that's what he needed with God. That there had to be a place where he could find peace in the midst of turmoil. 
when David was a boy and the lion and the bear came, he had nowhere to go. But he had established a relationship with God. And he knew that God would be forever with him. That God would be faithful to him. So that when the other things in David's life came up, he wasn't, he wasn't taken aback by them. You, you simply read through the words of David and you're going to find out that all the time in David's trials and tribulations, he went to the Lord. And he looked to God, not only for his defense, but also for his deliverance. That God would make everything come out right. And Christians today have no refuge in God. And consequently, when there's things that come, they don't know where to go. It's like those people in Oklahoma. Where do they go? They tried to hide in this place and that place. They went up against walls and the wall fell on them. They didn't know where to go. There was no place for them to hide. There was no place of safety for them. And I watch as Christians are assaulted by the devil. And they run around like chickens with their head cut off. Because they don't go to God. They run everywhere else. You know, you, normally you take the path of least resistance. You go where you always have gone. It's like the river going through a mountain. That river has cut a path. It, it looks like a small thing, a river <coughs> against a mountain. Yeah. The Grand Canyon was a river. Yeah. Yeah. And that whole thing was cut out by water. Now, you and I, if we do not build a relationship with God, if we have no trust in God, you will take the path of least resistance and you'll do what you've always done. Yeah. And it doesn't get you any closer to safety than those kids were in the school as the people were around their houses. But there was one dad I read about. He ran to his son's school and he pulled him out and he ran to his house that was across the street. And he put the boy in and he got in after him and he pulled that cellar door shut And he said it was crazy in there. The door was trying to be swinging open, pulling him out. And he had to resist and hold that thing. And it would have been scary to say, well, you know what? We've got to get out of this thing. It's going to fall apart. But he knew, he trusted that if he stayed where he was, everything was going to be all right. Yeah. There's a lot of Christians they haven't picked up on this yet. Their relationship with God has not come to a place where they have found a place of peace and safety and rest for their minds and hearts. Mm -hmm. And so they're tormented. Yes. Amen. Yep. Yep. Fear grips them. Yep. And when we're tormented by fear, yep. we tend to do dumb things. Yes, we don't make right decisions when we act out of fear. That's why in the military they taught us what to do for every circumstance. Yeah. And you knew who you were supposed to listen to. Yeah. And you knew what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And you knew what the other guys were going to do. They prepared you beforehand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
But there are a lot of guys that Christians they have never built that. They don't have a refuge that David had. We're watching things transpire now in the world that have never happened before. And there's a lot of worry. The Bible says in the last days men's hearts will fail them. Yeah. For what? Fear. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. Why should that happen inside the house of God? Because they never built. They never learned to go to that place of refuge. They never stayed tight with God during those times. You know, if you always try to bail yourself out, you're going to you're never, never going to know peace. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the peace of God passes all understanding. Yes. That's what God promises us. What's peace that passes all understanding? That means when you look with your eyes, nothing seems any different. But you've got peace. Yeah. That can only come through the lion and the bear. It can only come during times of your life <coughs> where you have found that you can go to God. And when the siren goes off, when bad things happen, where do you go? I've been around Christians, said they were Christians, I believe. They heard something bad happen and they start cussing. Why do they do that? Well, because it's flesh. They always rely on their flesh. They never learn to rely on God. They never learn to trust in God. And as that father grabbed his son and took him into that shelter, they made it. They made it. The door was bouncing and everything was going crazy. But they made it. And when they got outside, everything was gone. Everything was gone. But his son made it because there was a dad that grabbed him and took him to a place. We need to take people to the place where they can trust God. We need to point them in the right direction. And I can only tell you where they're at. I can only tell you that there is a place of refuge. But if you don't establish that yourself in your life, you will not go there in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. You'll do everything you can do on your own, and then when that peters out, you won't know what to do. It's like David said, I can't wear all this junk. I haven't tested it. <coughs> I haven't tested it. I've never, I've never tried this. I've never put on a sword and coat of mail. I've never worn this. So what he did was he got what he knew worked. God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. What have you got established in your life tonight for times of trouble. See, growing up in California, we had uh, earthquake drills forever <coughs> going to school. <coughs> My dad would do earthquake drills at the house. He went through the earthquake in L.A. and he would tell us about it. Tell us what we needed to do, where we needed to go. We'd practice it. There was a fire, we'd practice getting out of the house. Church, I can only tell you what to do. 
You have to allow this place to be established for your life. Yeah. You see, this is what made David different from all the other kings. David learned to go to God even when he messed up. Yeah. Even when he messed up. The prophet comes to him and says, Thou art the man. Well, another king threw the prophet in jail because he never said anything good to him. Yeah. Never dawned on him he might listen and do what he said. He said, well, you're going to stay in there and eat the bread of suffering till I come back. And he said, you ain't coming back. Oops. King David had learned that there was a place he could go. You remember when David sinned by counting the children of Israel? He was given three choices. The enemy could overrun him. There would be a famine. Or God would bring a judgment against him. Now, in the natural, you might think, well, I can probably get through. I could probably get through not eating for a while. <laughs> David didn't answer that way. He said, let me fall into God's hands. We fall into God's hands because he's merciful. God is gracious. He knew where he could go, church. He, I want you to live with peace. It isn't something that you that you need when the tornadoes alarms go off. You need it long before then. You need to know it's there. You need to experience it. You need to realize that when the hard time comes, you have a place to go. Yeah. Good friend of mine, Jack Harris. <clears throat> I just found out that he was diagnosed with colon cancer. He's been a preacher before I was a preacher. Yeah. He's nine years younger or older than I am. Where did he, what did he do? Well, he went to God. You know, if you haven't tested, if you haven't tested that, even when you go to the place of refuge, you'll still live in fear. If you haven't tested it, if you've never gone there, never experienced it, never had the reality settled upon you that God is always going to be there to take care of you, and right comes out right, even though we don't understand it, if you've never really had that nailed down in your life, you'll race to that place with God, and you'll, you'll say something to the Lord, but all you'll do is just freak out. Your mind's racing. Why? Well, because you've never... Never established that place. I remember when I got the phone call. I was at work, and they called me over the job shack, and they they told me that my wife had called me from the hospital. <laughs> well, I called her up. She said Eric has been burned over 30% of his body and I don't know if he's going to make it. I was in the middle of the room all these guys and I immediately fell on my knees. Yeah. And God gave me peace. God gave me peace. 
going to be all right. Church, I want you to have peace. No matter what goes on in this world. I want you to have peace. You might, maybe you need to dig a shelter. You need to get on your knees. Find a place to be with God. Establish that relationship, that trust. And you never really know how good it is until it gets really bad. Yeah. Never know how really good it is until it's really bad. That's why people do things on their own. And they don't have the place that David talked about. The Lord is my shepherd. They, they, they have no place. There's no stronghold for them. There's no refuge. They've heard about Jesus. They've heard about God. But it's never been built into them. It's not something that they can pick up and just say, Oh God, and I know your peace. I promise you, if it hasn't happened yet, it will. You're going to need God's peace. And you need to find out now before, before the tornado comes. This is why I fear for people that say, well, I'll get, I'll get saved right before I die. Mm -hmm. Well, you've never learned to trust in God up till then. Yeah. You've rejected Him that whole time of your life. And, and then you think that you're automatically going to run to God. Fat chance. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen people dying and they're cussing. They didn't go to God. Why didn't they go to God? Well, because they never established that. It was never their go-to place. I want you to understand that whether God delivers you from or whether God delivers you through, God will always be with you. Amen. He said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But while he's there, you need to grab on to him. Yes. It's like the, the woman <coughs> snuck through the crowd and grabbed hold the, the garment of Jesus. And he said, whoa, somebody touched me. And the disciples, they said, well, everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me in faith. There needs to be that place where you know you can go. And that God's going to meet with you. Tonight, God's, God's talking to us. We need God. We need God always. There's going to be well, there was the ark and there was only a handful that were ready. Yes. And they were only ready because the Lord was gracious. Mm -hmm. And then there was Sodom and Gomorrah and there was only a couple. There was really only one. Mm -hmm. His son-in-law laughed at him because why? Because he never talked about God before. He said, oh, you're just a hypocrite. His wife looked back. They had never built that place with God. I'm telling you, church, God loves you. And he wants you to have this relationship that no matter what is going on, you can have peace. That passes understanding. That 
no matter what's transpiring, God's good. And I promise you, that when the tornado alarms go off and everybody else is running crazy, you'll find a place to go because you, it's been ready for years, not yesterday. You don't dig, dig your shelter when you hear the alarm. Right. You're not going to get right with God when you hear the trumpet. That's right. We need to do it beforehand. Amen. Let's bow our heads. God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you, God, that you are our rock and our fortress. We can come to you and be safe. God, take these under your wing. Let them experience the peace that passes all understanding. Meet with these tonight, God. Some of you, as our heads are bowed, some of you, God is really dealing with you about being able to have peace, about leading your family, about leading others to the strong tower, the place that is always safe. And it's because you haven't done that yet. You know in your heart of hearts that when things happen, fear grips you. God wants to deliver you from fear. God wants you to walk in peace. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God has spoken to you. I want you to stand up with me. And I'm going to pray that God will touch you and bring a revelation of His ability in the middle of the fight. His ability in the midst of the problem. Some of you are in the midst of it right now and there's no peace. I'm going to pray for you. And I believe the Lord's going to touch you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each one of these. They belong to you, God. I ask you, Father, that you would lead them now to the place of refuge. That you would lead these now to a place God where there's safety God that we could be used so that others would find your peace that our families would find your peace oh God I thank you for victory over the devil I take authority now over the spirit of fear and torment that is coming against lives in this place. And Satan, I command you to release them. In the name of Jesus Christ, release them. And Father, I pray your peace now. Holy Spirit, do what no man can do. Holy Spirit, come to these. Minister to their spirit. Cause them to know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that they can trust that everything's going to be all right. And God, I thank you for it. I give you praise for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap off for it. Thank you.
tell you something. To everybody around you, you're gonna you you might look like the nut building a boat. Mm -hmm. But when it starts to rain, they'll come knocking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Might look like a nut building a bomb shelter or a tor tornado cellar. But when everything's coming apart, houses are being blown away. You won't be a fool then. Let's take our seats. We're going to do one last thing. We're going to give to the Lord tonight. This is one of the places we build the shelter. We trust in God. When it would be, I got one, Jimmy, thank you. When it would be easier to trust in the arm of flesh. God didn't say it would make sense to give. To the carnal man, 10 minus 1 is less. But with God, it doesn't work that way. 10 minus whatever comes out to be whatever God wants it to be. Yeah. But I promise you this, it's always going to be more than 10. That's right. It's always going to be more than 10. God, thank you for these hearts that love you. Thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness. God, I thank you for delivering from fear right now. Lord, re <coughs> receive these offerings and our tithes. Multiply it back, Father. We love you, Father. We honor you with this, our first fruits. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give to the Lord. Bless each one of you. Please keep Mary on in your prayers. They've got her in a uh, convalescent home right now, getting strengthened so that she can go back to her apartment. Uh, so you keep her in your prayers. That'd be great. If you want to visit her, she's on Bridgeport, 5520. It's University Place, and um, she's in room 401. She loved me to see you, I'm sure. God bless you guys. I love you.